moving on to the first thing <coughs> in kinematics that is the position vector very first thing in the kinematics that is the position vector so it is the very basic thing i want to know it from you guys what is a position vector a vector that describes position a vector that describes position wonderful from where origins sir yeah huh? yes jimit you also wanted to say something your origin is absolutely correct answer but i wanted to listen this word our frame of reference huh from frame, frame of reference. reference yes from frame of reference a vector which gives you the position from frame of reference that is your position vector which we will call r vector yes jimit you wanted to say something um, no sir okay so position vector actually gives you the position from certain frame of reference frame of reference i'll write is it is for so sir actually uh, i was going to correct in this definition that position vector gives the position from origin in a certain frame of reference yes sir, because okay. origin the word origin is must because in mathematics uh, mathematician never worry about position vector. They took the vector anywhere in the space and they can ah. go on calculating their work. Yes. But the physicist always mm, means uh, worry about the origin. Vet origin. Yes. 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 Correct. Absolutely correct. So uh, that's what I was going to cover in this. But yes, you have pointed it out. So this gives the position from a certain frame, a certain frame of references origin do you get the idea that that is one kind of a vector whose tail lies on the origin whose head lies on the point x y z whose position which we want to find okay the this is the point uh, whose position we want to find so the vector lies like this this is known as the position vector how do we write the position vector in components we write it like this its x component is the projection over x axis which is x if, as you can see here this is x uh, its y component is projection over y axis which is y as you can see here and its z component if you i know you guys can only say uh, i know you this drawing looks like that that this draw, vector looks only in two dimension but consider it as a vector in three dimension. Okay, how to think about a vector in three dimension? Look at the corner, any corner in your room. Place a ball pen like this, not uh, attached to any wall, not stick to any wall, a ball pen like this. And this is a three dimensional vector. This is a head of the vector, this is a tail of a vector. Uh, and uh, these projections on x axis. Draw perpendiculars from there to x axis, y axis, and z axis, and those are your projections. Okay, so it, the vector written like x component x cap plus y component y cap plus z component z cap. Okay, we uh, already learned something in something like this in the vectors, so I am not going into the details. This is how you define a position vector in Cartesian coordinate system. In other coordinate systems, the position vector is different, but in Cartesian coordinate system, this is your position vector. Now, position vector is really not a vector. Why not a vector? Because just as we discussed about the vectors, vectors also should, uh, they just not only, they are not only just uh, arrows with magnitude and direction. Whenever we change the coordinate system, vector remains the vectors. So it should not change its magnitude, it should not change its uh, direction. Whenever we change a coordinate system, the vector should not change its magnitude and it should not change its direction. That is the rule, always a rule for a vector. Because we defined parallel vectors like this, there, there was no set of axes. Parallel vectors are this, whatever axis you take, these two are the parallel vectors. Okay. And if I want to tell these, uh, these two are the equal vectors, then I just want to make sure that both of them have the same length. 
then in any reference frame, any set of axes, these two are equal vectors. So this guy is not a vector in that sense that this, suppose this is one reference frame. And there is another reference frame which is not like this. This is like this, suppose. The other reference frame is maybe rotating in a big merry-go-round. Okay. So this is another reference frame. This is first reference frame. Now, if you want to find out the position of this point in both the reference frame, uh, it will not be the same. For first reference frame, this position will look like this. From other reference frame, this position will look like this. So I will call this R dash. I'll call this R. And both are not same. So the position vector is not a vector in itself because it changes its position. Uh, so changes its direction and magnitude at each and every reference frame. So they are different for different reference frames. So this frame is S prime, suppose this frame is S. We denote the reference frames generally by S. Okay. So this is S, this is S prime. And uh, here the direction and magnitude are different for different frames of references. That's why it is not a strictly speaking vector. We anyways will call this position as a position vector. But strictly speaking, it is not a vector. Okay. So this idea I just want to get in your head very clearly. That strictly speaking, it is not a vector, but still we call this guy a vector. Okay. If you define a specific reference frame, then it is a vector. Then you don't need to worry about anything. But if you go to another reference frame, then it is not a vector. Okay, so it does not change itself moving from one reference frame to another. Uh, it changes itself moving from one reference frame to the other. That that's why it is not a specific vector or something like that. Yes. Moving on. If you are if you have got any doubts till this point, you can ask. Moving on. There is one more thing. So till now we were set is, uh, finding out where are we or where is anybody else. Now if that somebody is moving, okay. So if they are moving from one point to the other point, the vector joining the initial point to the final point is known as the displacement, and it is denoted by S vector. Okay, in our textbook. Uh, Clapton and Colenco, it is denoted by vector S. In different textbooks, there are different notations, but the meaning is same. You are moving from one point to the other point. The vector joining those two points is your displacement vector. Okay. So suppose, say you are starting from this point, you have gone to these points, and you are at this point. What will be the displacement vector? Straight line joining between two points. Yes, so displacement vector is a vector joining two points starting from initial point to the final. So this is your initial point, this is your final point, this is your vector, which is your displacement vector, even though you moved on this curved trajectory, doesn't matter. Okay, so even though you moved on this curved trajectory, your displacement vector is defined as the displacement. That is how much you actually displace from the initial position to the final position. That is your displacement. Okay, and there is something else called distance. If I won't talk about it right now, you guys will tell me that yes, you didn't talk about distance. So let's talk about it for the sake of continuing. What is distance? Actual path length traveled. Yes, total path length. Okay, so what is distance? If I want to understand it from this example. That I have a thread, very thin or thin thread. I'll uh, keep this thread with me and will keep on laying that thread wherever I go. Okay, I'll keep on laying that thread wherever I go. I'll just uh, put a little little amount of thread there. That is a continuous big thread that I have, and I'll uh, thread means dhaga that uh, thread uh, that with which you sew your clothes. So I'll put those uh, threads wherever I go, wherever I go, wherever I go, wherever I go. So that thread will be of this shape in the end, whenever I reach the final position. Thread will be of this shape. Now what will I do? I'll straighten that thread and I'll measure the length of that thread. That is the distance. Okay. 
So distance is nothing but if you take a small amount of dx here, and if you integrate that dx over the complete path, over the complete path, whatever the path you have, is your uh, is your answer of the total length traveled. But that path should be specific. Whatever path you are traveling on, this is the length of the path. Okay. So this is how you actually measure a distance. But uh, we'll do some problems and then we'll come to this definition. I don't want to throw that this on to you right now. But yes, this is the actual meaning of distance that you have a thread, uh, you throw the threads and then you'll find out. In Google Maps, what do you see? Displacement or distance? Google Maps? Distance. distance. You see distance. In Google Maps, you see distance. You don't see the displacement. Okay, so I think we all are clear on the definition of distance and displacement. You see, distance cannot be a vector because it is always changing its direction in this course. Okay, so from initial to final, distance does not have a fixed direction. It does not have a fixed magnitude. Okay, you can go from I to F from this path as well. So distance does not have a fixed magnitude or a fixed direction. There are two paths possible. It, distance does not have a fixed magnitude or direction. So you can't say that distance is a vector, but displacement is because displacement is same in all the cases. How much case, how many cases it take? Doesn't matter. So displacement is a vector from initial point to end. Yes. And it is a true vector. How, why can I how can I say that it is a true vector? Because this is one reference frame S. This is another reference frame S prime. From S, this point is given by X1, Y1, Z1. From S, this another point, point final point, and this is initial point. Uh, this final point is given by x2, y2, z2. But similarly, from S prime, this point, how, how to define the position of this point? Just draw a vector here. Okay. Just draw a vector here. Or position of this point, you know, is x1 prime, y1 prime, z1 prime. And similarly, from S prime, the coordinates of final point is x2 prime, y2 prime, z2. Okay. So you can see. That if you talk about this vector here, the position of this point is different from S prime and S prime. But what about displacement? What about displacement? It is the same vector in both the reference frames. It is pointing in same direction. It is having same length in both the reference frames. Okay. It is having same direction and same length. Whatever reference frame you take, either S or S prime or some S double prime, which looks something like this. So S double prime, which has uh, Y axis here and X axis here and Z axis going inside. This is some S double prime reference frame. From there also, this S will be similar vector. It will have same length, same direction. It will not change. That's why this is a true vector in a true sense. Uh, true is a very uh, important word here. Because what is true in the sense of vector, it should not change itself whenever we transform the coordinates. Its length and its direction should be the same. Okay.